Hallelujah. So everybody, right before we get started, everybody, just begin to just exalt the Lord right now. Oh, 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 Everybody say restore God order. Restore God order. Hallelujah. But it's something as is of utmost necessity as we go deeper into understanding this. So I greet every one of you in a name which is above every name. I, I love every one of you. And trust me, me, myself, Lady J, my wife, we both we truly love every one of you. And we do not take for granted the fact that God has entrusted us with each other. Praise the Lord. Y'all, tonight, um, in order for us to understand what it means to respect and to restore God order, man, this is something that has just been ringing in my spirit. And it's something about humility. To be humble or to walk in humility. And tonight, y'all, I just want to get deep into humility, y'all. And I want to give y'all about 20 attributes of an humble person or walking in humility. So that means that we're going to get a chance to look at ourselves, y'all. There were some things I was like, oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. Then there was other things I was like, ooh, I don't do that. Like, Lord, I need you to help me because in that area... I'm not so humble. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Yo, and I'm just trying to be honest and transparent with you all. How can we approach God without humility? Hallelujah. I saw this little publication that I thought would be great right before I go into a scripture. And it's like a little chart that says from arrogance to humility. And when a person is in arrogance, it's like they're fault proof. Like they don't have anything wrong with them in their own minds. Fault proof. But humility admits they make mistakes. It's a couple of them, y'all. Arrogance finds it hard to listen to somebody. But humility listens to understand. They don't listen because they understand, but they listen in order to understand. Arrogance interrupts. Can't even let a person finish what they're saying. Interrupts. But humility gives space, gives you the room to finish. Hallelujah. Arrogance wants to be right. Humility has an open mind. You don't have to write these down, y'all, because I got something that I'm, I'm about to go. These are not even a part of the 20 attributes. These, this, is just, this is just a running start, y'all. Trust me. Arrogance doesn't see differently. Everything looks the same to someone who's in arrogance. But humility embraces differences. 
I know we don't see things exactly the same. Arrogance pushes their point through, whereas humility allows ideas to emerge. I want y'all to understand, y'all, do y'all hear some traits that sounds like it's great for leaders? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Arrogance shows frustration soon. Quickly frustrated. That's arrogance. Boy. But humility demonstrates patience. I want y'all to just look at this, y'all. Arrogance avoids accountability. Don't hold me to nothing. But humility takes ownership. Praise the Lord. And the last one before I give you a scripture, then we're going to go through the 20. Everybody say, hold on tight. Hold on tight. Hold on tight. Arrogance creates a fear culture. Make everybody think that everything is stiff and rigid. You can't do it no other way. Creates a fear culture. But humility builds a learning culture. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, man, why don't you go ahead and turn, if you would, to the book of Micah. Micah chapter 6. Because if we're going to be, I mean, y'all, it doesn't make any sense to talk about restoring God order and not have a mindset that's necessary in order to embrace who God is. You know that you can actually be saying, I know God is God. I know he's Lord. I know he's Adonai. I know he's owner. I know he's creator. I know all this stuff. And walk right out the door and still do whatever you want to do. And not reverence God. Not respect God. Well, how does that happen? That means there's a lack of humility. When you humble and he, he, when you walk in humility before, I'm not talking about necessarily just humility before people. I'm talking about humility before the Most High. When you realize the Most, most High sees, the scripture says in Chronicles, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the whole earth, meaning he's watching everything. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, Lord, give me humility. Lord, Lord give me humility. This humility man. Micah 6. And I'm going to go ahead and just read through this one myself. And then I'll give a couple of scriptures. There's not a lot of scriptures. But these points are going to really, I'm going to see if they're going to do y'all what they did to me. Praise the Lord. Micah 6 and verse number 6 says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? Talking about trying to get into God's presence. Like, what's the best way, Minister Mwamba, should I come before the Lord? I want to get into his presence, but what does it take, Brother Fidel? How do I, how do I get to him? Sister Elizabeth, man, I know I want so much more, but how do I approach him? How do I get to him? Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? Look what it says. And bow myself before the high God. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Is it about how much money you have? Y'all know they got people that be quick to stand up in the line. Hundred dollar line. And they quick because they got that money. They think, well, I got, I got access to the most high. Wait a minute. I want you to know. If God blessed you with money and something to give, honor the Lord with all of your substance. But I need you to understand that that's not the ticket to getting into his presence. He says, shall I give a calf of a year old? Look what he says in verse number seven. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Oh my God. Verse number eight. But he showed you, old oh man, what is good to the Lord. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly. That means to love justice. Hallelujah. To be right. Hallelujah. To love mercy. And what y'all about to say in that last... Praise. Oh my God, y'all. 
We can't even approach and understand restoring God order if we don't know what it means to walk humbly before him. Because if you're not walking humbly before him, you're walking arrogantly before him. Did y'all get that? Praise the Lord. Everybody say, I resist arrogance. I resist, I resist arrogance. arrogance. I resist it right now. My little brother, Shaquay, actually posted this little saying that he did, and it, it hit me so hard. Humility leads to self-control. Humility. Y'all can write that down. Humility leads to self-control. And pride leads to self-destruction. Humility leads to self-control. The more you can walk in humility, that means that you're able to control yourself. Humility has a lot to do with temperance. Humility leads to self-control. And pride leads to self-destruction. Nobody can't tell you nothing. Hallelujah. Is everybody ready? Praise the Lord. Attribute number one. For a person who chooses to embrace humility and being humble. A humble person, number one, is not boastful. Not boastful. What does it mean not to be boastful? They don't flaunt wealth or accomplishments. They're not looking to brag on what they have or what they possess. They're not boastful. They don't flaunt wealth or accomplishments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Minister G, why don't you hurry up and turn real quick to Proverbs 15.33. I got a couple of verses, but it's nowhere near how many points we got. Proverbs 15 and 33, Minister G. Let me know. Yes, you sir. Got it? Praise yes, Lord. sir. Praise. Let that out the clip, man. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord brings instruction and wisdom and humility comes before honor. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. Minister Judea, can you catch that one also? I'm sorry, because I know how they told Minister G. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 15 and 33. Amen. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Do y'all see this? So if you want to receive honor, y'all, nothing's wrong. I don't want y'all to think that that means that you're trying to lift yourself up because you want honor. Honor just means you want to be respected. You want to be respected. But the scripture says before you get honored, you got to embrace humility. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So when wisdom is given, what attitude should we have? Humility. So before we receive honor, we must walk in humility. That's point number one. Y'all, we got a lot to cover. Point number two. A person that walks in humility is grateful for everything in life. So you can basically say that that person shows gratitude. Hallelujah. Grateful for everything in life. This person, watch this, y'all. If, if, if you're not doing this often enough, it's showing the gauge of how much humility we have. This person feels blessed every day. Never taking opportunities for granted. This person is grateful. Oh man, I get a chance to do this? Regardless of when it didn't happen, I get a chance to do it now? Man, God has been good to me because it can always be so much worse. This is a person that walks in humility. Number three. A person 
that has humility or a humble person, they don't belittle others. They're not looking for a reason to talk down or talk bad about nobody. They don't belittle others. You know why? They see others as equals. Hallelujah. Number four. Attribute number four. A person that walks in humility is not jealous. Not jealous. What does it mean when you say not jealous? Not insecure. Hallelujah. With the need to be better than others. Not insecure with a need to be better. Like I'm not good unless I'm better than somebody else. Like I'm jealous because I want to be better. Not jealous. Praise the Lord. Sister Nisa, why don't you turn with me if you would. Turn real quick to Proverbs 18 and 12. Proverbs 18 and verse number 12. Everybody said that I'm not a jealous person. I'm not, I'm not a jealous person. Hallelujah. I'm not secure with the need to be better than somebody else. Sister Nisa, you got that? Proverbs 18 and verse 12? Yes. Go ahead with that. Proverbs 18, 12 says, Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty. But humility comes before honor. You all see that? Before destruction, the heart of a man is lifted up and haughty and proud. And honor is before, honor is, before honor is humility. Praise the Lord. Point number five. Point number five, if you see one that you come across that you say, oh man, I need some work on that, just put a little star next to it so you can begin to pray about that. Target it. Launch some missiles, some arrows at that thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like this. Yes, sir. The next attribute is not proud. A person that's walking in humility is not proud. What do you mean when you say it's not proud? This pride is evil, it's arrogant. It takes credit that only belongs to God or someone else, not proud. When you're proud, if I did that, you know, I did that too. I, 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 look at me, I did that. Pride is evil, arrogant. Taking credit that belongs only to God. Hallelujah. Everybody take a moment and give credit to God for what he's done, y'all. Because it's so easy for us to think that we did it. It's so easy to think that we did it. Lord, I give you glory right now, Lord God. Thank you for keeping me, Lord God. And Father, everyone that did something to help me, Lord God. Help me to. Hallelujah. So gratitude toward them, Father. Hallelujah. Point number six. A person that's walking in humility is not rude. Not rude. Y'all know rude, uh, put a slash next to that put sarcastic. If, you, if it's easy for you to be sarcastic, that's not humility, sir. Oh my God. It's not humility, ma'am, if you feel like you just gotta let somebody have it the way that you just want. Y'all listen, when you sarcastic, that's like cutting somebody. Like, you ain't know that? You slow or something? Are you dumb? Are you stupid? That's, when a person is being sarcastic, that's like a dagger. But a person who's walking in humility is not rude or sarcastic. That means a person that's rude and sarcastic doesn't have manners. They can't be rude and kind at the same time. In order to be kind, you got to say, nah, I don't tell them. Y'all, sometimes you got stuff that's in your mind, y'all got to be ready to let them have it in your mind. But don't let your mind, don't let your mouth take over your mind. Control yourself. 
No manners. You can't be rude and kind at the same time. So that means that if you rude, that means you literally door number one, be kind. Door number two, I'm going to let you have it. And they're like, forget being kind. Y'all, guess what? That's not humility. For the, just for the asking. That's all. When you're not rude, a person that's, that has humility, they're, they're courteous. Watch this. Courteous even while they're being tried and tested. They're still able to be, you know, that's number six here. A brush, that's still dealing with rude and sarcastic. If you're not rude and sarcastic, that means you're courteous and you're kind. Person can be kind and courteous even during the test. If you could be nice and ain't nobody pushing no buttons, you don't get no reward for that. Yeah. If somebody handle you bad, let me see you be kind now. Nah. It's gonna, it's gonna take, like Minister Moamba said, it's gonna take a demonstration of the power that you have. Can't be just with no eloquent words. You gotta have some kind of self-control. Praise the Lord. Let's go to number seven. Number seven, a person that's walking in humility is not vain. They're not vain. What is vain? Vain is when you got excessive self-love. Everything is about you. Vain is self-absorbed. You get to the point where you start finding yourself talking more about you than you're talking about God. Because it's all about you. Hallelujah. Number eight. A person that's walking in humility, watch this. They're not materialistic. What does that mean when you're materialistic? The person is obsessed with physical objects. Focus more on possessions of objects than on people. So you take something that you can possess and you make it work more than a person. Y'all gonna be able to see how they all connect together. Praise the Lord. Turn somebody uh, find uh, Proverbs 22 and 4. Proverbs 22 and 4. Again. Go ahead, Minister G. The reward of humility and the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. King Sam, why don't you read that one loud for me, too? Hallelujah. True humility and fear of the Lord leads to riches, honor, and long life. So, yo, so, so stop thinking that humility means that God don't want us to have nothing. Mm -hmm. Just what you get, get it in Him. Through Him. Look what it says. Bosco, read that same one, verse number four. Read it loud. Hallelujah. Humility is the fear of the Lord. It's wages on riches and honor and life. Oh my God. You want riches, honor, and life. The Bible says, the scripture says that the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow. No sorrow. So by, by humility and the fear of the Lord. Y'all listen, in order to understand God's order, you got to have humility and you got to walk in the fear of the Lord. Yes, and if you have, everybody, that's like a one-two punch. Humility and the fear of the Lord. If you walk in humility and possess the fear of the Lord, guess what's before you? Riches, honor, and life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm worth more than any one of my possessions. I'm worth more than any one of my possessions. Because we can find ourselves thinking that a possession adds to us. No, in actuality, we add to the possession. Why do you think they look for people who are rich and wealthy to wear certain things? Because they're looking for somebody that they esteem a high value on to now make the possession look like it's worth so much more. You know how they always say all the time, a basketball in my hand 
it's worth 15 to 20 dollars. But a basketball in Michael Jordan's hand, it's 20,000 dollars. Why? Not because of the ball. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who are you? Everybody say I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a royal, I'm a royal priesthood. priesthood. You gotta understand, you are royalty. There is no possession right. that you can wear or have that's worth more than you. Walk in humility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to number, that was number eight. Let's go to number nine. Number nine, a person that's walking in humility is not possessive. Not possessive. What does it mean to be possessive? Jealous of success of others. Do you really get messed up when you see somebody else progressing in life? I'm not talking about, like, yeah, I want to do that too. But you can get to a point where you mad. How they got it. And I did not possessive, jealous of success of others. When you have that type of possessiveness, it's a sign that you're carrying envy. Oh my God. Y'all, we got to deal with this stuff. If, if I'm walking in humility, I'm not envious of nobody. I'm grateful for everything that I have. If you're not possessive, that means you have a desire to lift up others who are doing good work. You know why you have a desire to lift them up? Like, I see you working, man. I see you praying. Man, I, I, every time I see Lisa and Bosco, I just think about the struggle. I think about the conversations we had. And that makes me want to lift y'all up. You know why? Because I know the struggle. So if I'm not possessive, that means I have a desire to see other people being lifted because you're doing a good job. Praise the Lord. Everybody, y'all ready for number 10? Let's go. Watch this, y'all. Number 10. A person that's walking in humility is not sorry for themselves. Not sorry for themselves. Man, what's wrong with me? Man, you got that because look where you live. Look who your parents were. I don't have that. It's not going to be good for me. If you're walking in humility, and especially if you're walking in humility before God, Lord, I don't know why you chose me for this. Oh my God, some people life may be boring if they know who their mom and their dad is and everything given to them. But Lord, you wanted me to have some adventure. I ain't know what was going to happen. So now you, you about to make my story extravagant. It's about perspective. I didn't like what happened, but now as I'm embracing humility, you know where I am. I don't have to feel sorry for myself. If I'm walking in humility, I'm not possessing self-pity. They wallow in their own misery. I don't, I didn't get this and I didn't get that. I don't have a car and now you wallowing. If I only had a car, or if I only had a better education, or if I only, if I had a wife, or if I had a boyfriend, wallowing, why does it seem like nobody's available for me? I'm, Cause I'm, and before you realize you're being self-pity, you start blaming yourself, you start talking bad about yourself, you start, you start literally criticizing yourself. And that's not humility. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Regardless of who don't give me any accolades or credit or affirmation. Hallelujah. I'm the righteousness of God. Come on, y'all feed, y'all feed all that. I'm the righteousness, I'm the righteousness of God. I know I'm not like everybody else. Because I wasn't supposed to be like everybody else. I'm still good looking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Self-pity. 
They wallow in their own misery. It's a mind, the person that is that is that's walking in humility, they have a mindset that everything has a reason and a purpose. Yeah. Everything has a reason and a purpose. Ain't something it picked. God, if you real, why you allowed this to happen to me? You gotta look deeper. I remember when I used to always wonder, I mean, yo, when I was young, there was a time that I started doubting God. I'm like, man, if God was real, where was he when I got molested? Where was he? Why did he let that happen to me? Did he want something like that to happen to me? That's the type of stuff that used to go in my mind. So guess what? When I started becoming sexually active, I used those things in my mind that made me doubt God to make me rush into darkness. Like, he don't, he, he don't care about what I'm doing anyway, so I might as well do what I want to do. Because back in my mind, I always felt like I knew that right was right and wrong was wrong. Why do you think a lot of times people drink and smoke? I'm not saying everybody, but some people drink and smoke because they're trying to nullify their conscience that's trying to show them the difference between right and wrong. So now I need, the gate is open a little bit, but if I drink, it's going to open that gate up more. Mm -hmm. So I get what I want, what I want to do. And I don't want to feel bad about it. Mm. Uh, I don't want to feel bad about it. But a person walking in humility, nah, there's a reason or purpose to this. I'm still going to maintain my stance. For all I see what everybody else doing, show me why I'm the way I am. Why did you choose me? Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next one. Which one are we on? Number 11 or 12? What's this? 11. Number 11. 11. Why is this, y'all? Number 11, a person that walks in humility is truthful. Truthful. Hallelujah. Let me get somebody to turn to 1 Peter 5 and 5. What is truthful? Truthful is the sign of integrity. Watch this. This person will not lie or exaggerate. No, look, a person walking in humility has no reason to be dishonest because they know that their good deeds will speak and not lie. A person that's walking in humility is truthful. They, they possess integrity. This person will not lie or exaggerate. They, they see themselves as not having a reason to be dishonest. Even if it's ugly, even if I don't have a reason to be dishonest, but they know their good deeds will, be, will speak and not lie. So even though you might have one thing wrong or one thing that you messed up on, it don't mean that every good thing you did is erased. I'm not just my accident or my mistake that I made. There's still more to me than that. So when you understand that in humility, you don't have to lie. This is an area that God is trying to work on in my life. So now I need to, I need Jesus, thank you so much for being in my life, but I think I need you to come out of that room I gave you. I need you to have access to the whole house. I need to give you these keys. Who got first Peter 5 5? What you say? Go ahead and read that one. Read it loud. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. Mm -hmm. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Oh my God. Y'all see that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Minister J.J., I want you to read that same one. First Peter 5 5. Likewise, you. You who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Oh, my God. So, so look what he says. Submit yourselves to your elder. And I want you all to know, this don't always mean somebody that's an elder just because they're older than you in age. It's not talking about that. The elder 
is the one that's more seasoned and more mature in that area. That's like going to a tutor. You got problems with geometry. Submit to the one that is elder over you. It could be a seven-year-old child that's a whiz. Submit yourself. Praise the Lord. And look what it says. In order for you to get the benefit of what you're trying to receive, you got to wear something like, like it's a robe. Look what it says. Clothe yourself with what? Be clothed with humility. humility. Why, why do I need humility? Because God resists the arrogant or the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Praise the Lord. They're like, what you see is what you get. How often is the person that's walking in humility? How often are they truthful? All the time. All the time. Well, let's just say most of the time. Let's say that. Let's say most of the time. <laughs> Wait, I'm just trying to be real. All right, let's go. Number 13. What? Number 12. 12. Number 12. A person who is walking in humility can relate. They can relate. They're not just thinking about themselves. A person with humility can relate. What is to relate? Always think about others. They see the vantage point of others and they're always helpful. I'm going to help you get yours because I know my help is coming. This must be my season to give. So I'm going to give. I'm going to give again. The more you have to give, guess what? The larger your harvest is going to be. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. One person plant one seed. The one who got 50 seeds can't get mad because it's taken me so much longer to plant all these seeds. If you stop comparing, like King Sam said, and you keep on sowing, that person is going to get the harvest from their one, but what you going to get? So that means that when I saw you sowing, I saw you done, I ain't got a problem with saying, man, good job. My job is to keep on sowing. Because what's coming back for me, it'd be nice if you could celebrate with me. I might even break your home or something. It ain't no fun if my home just can't have no with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, can relate. Number 13. Walk, a person walking in humility is not self righteous. Not self righteous. Hallelujah. What does that mean when you're not self righteous? That means you still see good in others as well as in yourself. But to be self-righteous means that you see nothing but the negative or the evil. Like you can't see the good. But a person who's not self-righteous, they see the good in others, as well as themselves. Well, this next one is gonna be something. We're gonna have to really make sure we explain this. Number 14, a person walking in humility is not judgmental. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with this. We're going to have to deal with this. What does it mean? Because some people be like, that's right. Don't judge nobody. Nah, it's not talking about <laughs> judging nobody. Oh, oh. When it says it's not judgmental, this judgmental means giving somebody premature or a harsh, unfair opinion. Yeah. Meaning you making a judgment without knowing everything. Oh, God. So you just put a little ashes. Oh. <laughs> Premature, harsh, or unfair opinion. There is a difference in proper judgment versus being prejudiced. Yep. I see a little bit, yeah, you know that's what you're doing. Yeah, that's, that's how you are. 
You got, you got a do rag on, yeah. You trying to be a thug? <laughs> Just prejudice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this, y'all. When you get to a point where you realize that you can't be judgmental like that, most people who are humble is because they've been humbled by some type of life experience that taught them a valuable lesson. They was real judgmental on everybody else and something happened to you and all of a sudden you got a different vantage point. And now you see, man, don't be so hard on them like that. We all struggle. We all going through this and that. And whatever I'm not struggling with, it's only by grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is this helping y'all? Most humble people have been humble. You ain't just wake up humble like that. Somebody walking in some true humility, sometimes you need to pull them on the side. Because you know there ain't nobody else around. But bro, what happened to you? Like, 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 what you went through? Believe it or not, believe it or not, y'all, if you come across a person that has an attribute that is God-centered, you better believe it was a price that was paid. And what was the fruit of the price paid? Change. And I like that, Lord. Long suffering now. You don't come to church this Sunday, and I see you next Sunday or whenever. Man, God called me. You know what I mean? See you later. Praise the Lord. Not judgmental. Watch this next one, y'all. Number 15. I must have missed one because I'm lying. says 16, so I wonder if I missed something. But uh, this one said, the next one is take it in stride. A person that's walking in humility, they take it in stride. What does that mean? Take it in stride. In, I am. Take it in stride. Like you take it in a take like you roll it with the punches. Mm -hmm. Like you get yeah. hit. And you just like somebody said, man, I ate that. Yeah, I ate that. It's like it's like somebody saying, yeah, you know, someone like a football player. When you get hit, you, you don't get so mad at the person that tackles it because that's the man was supposed to do. And you get up and you might even give him credit, man. That was a good lift right there. You got, you got me on that one. I, dog, I ain't, I ain't even see you done. Yeah, but you know what? But look, but look what they may turn around and say. But the next time, I'm looking for you. I ain't, I ain't, look, I ain't see you last time. You get that ball and all of a sudden your eyes is like a radar. What are you There you go. There you go. Let's, let's take this in stride. Look, if you're not humble, you are high maintenance. High maintenance. Never satisfied. If you can't take it in stride, that means you're always looking for a reason to have some another accommodation just for you. Never satisfied with how things are. Humble people are well aware that there are ups and downs. Yeah. Humble person like, man, I'm in a season right now. Everything been good. Ooh, Lord, praise the Lord. Let me prepare myself because I, I know another test is coming. Well aware of ups and downs. Watch this, y'all. A person that can take it in stride, y'all, just put a little asterisk if you need to. A person that can take it in stride, they have the ability to stay positive. A person that takes it in stride, they find it easy to apologize. If you're somebody that have a problem with saying I'm sorry and fessing up with what you did wrong, you can't take it in stride. That's a lack of humility. They have the ability to stay positive. It's easy to apologize. And guess what? They get back on track immediately. They ain't trying to wallow. They ain't trying to stay down in no muck. They're like, okay, I saw it. Man, who can I call and talk to about helping me with this? 
That's why when you can confess your sins to one another, y'all, that's like saying immediately, I'm looking for help because I need somebody again. Man, how you did this? I mean, what kind of prayers you was doing, man? What scriptures were you going to? I'm trying to take it in stride. I'm not saying that I can avoid this stuff, but if, it, if it's inevitable that I'm going to come across this, I might as well know how to handle it when it shows up. Yeah, we go. Because I'm going to tell everybody, say, take it in stride. Take it in stride. Take it in stride. Praise the Lord. Let me get uh, Minister T. Turn to Acts 20. Acts 20, and go to verse number, let's see. Watch this, y'all. Verse 18. Everybody say, I'm taking it in stride right now. I'm taking it in stride, I'm taking it in stride right now. That's why Jesus said, man, the rain is going to fall on the just and the unjust. Stop crying. Why is this happening to me? Guess what? It's happening to you and it's happening to other people also. Just because you don't see it don't mean it ain't happening. Just because you don't see their struggle don't mean they don't have one. Yes, sir. Verse 18, Minister T, read that line. Uh, yeah, I like to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Acts 20, verse 18. And when they were come to him, he said, Ocho, you know from the first day that I came over to Asia, after one manner, I have been with you in all seasons. Wait a minute, do y'all see that? He said, when I came to you in Asia, y'all know what manner I have been, how I carried myself, not just in one season, all the time. A person that's walking in humility has a level of consistency. Wow. Same way, a season don't change me. Hardship don't change me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Minister G, read that Amplified in that verse 18. And when they arrived, he said to them, you yourselves are well acquainted with my manner of living among you from the first day that I set foot in the province, the province of Asia and how I continued afterwards. Watch this, y'all. Verse number 19, Minister T. Verse 19. Glory to God. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. Wait, you want to say that again? Oh, my. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears. Oh my God. And temptations. Oh. Which fell, which befell me by the lion and wait of the truth. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. Y'all, yes, how many of y'all say I want to serve the Lord? Like for real. Hallelujah. I want to serve the Lord. Look what he says. Y'all saw me. I was right there with y'all. He said, I was serving the Lord with all humility of my mind. Like, I did it in such a way that you could tell I was dedicated to doing what I was doing. And look what he says. When I was doing it, y'all saw me crying a lot of times. But I stayed faithful in my humility. Everybody say, stay faithful. Stay faithful. And not only was I crying, look what he says. I had temptations too. Y'all think I ain't going through nothing? Like I see them women. I see them trials. Everybody getting money the easy way you think. I'm not in my mind thinking, I wonder if I can make some money too. I see these cats walking with these beautiful women. You think I don't want to walk with a beautiful woman too? Finding out that I might have to compromise a little bit. I'm catching the bus. You think I don't want to have a man that's driving me around or with me? He said, but I was serving the Lord. And I had to see all these temptations. Blessed is the man. Hallelujah. That endures temptation. When he is tried. What is that? That's humility. Not before the person or the thing. That means person walking in humility like this little some more of me, it made God be. God, I, I know I see this temptation in this trial, but guess what? I know you're watching me too, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I, I can please myself. Mm -hmm. 
I can choose to try to please this person or I can choose to please God. Father, I pick you right now. So y'all saw me serving with all humility of mind, with many tears, temptations, which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. And look what he says in verse number 20. Brother Elijah, read that verse 20. Acts 20, verse 20. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable. Oh, my God. And teaching you in public and from house to house. Oh, my God. So you know what he's saying right here? I didn't allow my tests or my tears to make me start watering down the gospel. I'm going to give you that truth even when it's hurting me. Even when it's hurting me. Even though I'm being tempted just like y'all, Lord. Lord, let my commitment be to you to where I'm going to speak nothing but truth. Even if I'm bleeding from cutting myself. Praise the Lord. But he says, I didn't shrink back. I gave you what was profitable to you. And I showed you. I lifted in front of you publicly. And guess what? I ain't just do it by your house, box, though. Went on by saying, I live the same way. Y'all, if a person's not walking in humility, they can say, Lulu, I know how we was when we were by Sam and Bosco. Man, this is something different. Man, you got some, say, bro, you got some smoke over here? Believe it or not, when you're walking in humility, you're like, Nah, I can't. Wait a minute, you thought because I was with you by Bosco and Sam that I'm I'm the same. My bad bro, but you got me wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hold on, I don't know what I said. Did I say something to make you believe I get down like that? Right, right. I don't rock like that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's keep moving. Next one, y'all. Oh, this is a good one right here. A person who walks in humility is not self-destructive. What do you mean when you say they're not self-destructive if they walk in humility? Not self-destructive. That means that this person does not have signs of anger and bitterness. You self-destructive, that means you quick to be angry, quick to show signs of bitterness. Humble people try not to give out the hurt that they experience themselves. I ain't doing that to you, man. You ain't, you ain't deserve that. Just because somebody else handled me bad, I'm not about to turn around and handle you bad. Just because somebody else disrespected me, I'm not about to disrespect you. Because I'm not self-destructive. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let me hurry up. The next one is not arrogant. When you're not arrogant, what does that mean? You have an inflated ego. You feel like you're better than others, like a sense of superiority, which breeds disrespect. If you disrespect somebody, if it's easy for you to disrespect somebody, that's signs of arrogance. Because you feel like you're better than somebody. Oh, I got some knowledge that, oh, you don't know this? Hey, y'all, get a load of this one, y'all. We got a live one. He, don't, he didn't know. That's a sign of arrogance. Disrespect. Because you want to feel better than somebody. The next one, y'all, the next one, what is it? Number, number 19, number 18. Number 18. They don't hold on to the past. Person walking in humility, don't hold on to the past. Why? Because holding on to the past prevents forward progression. Whatever you're dealing with, you understand you got to keep it in front of you. Release old feel feelings and focus on the present. Where are we right now? Let that other stuff go, man. Let it, everybody say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Person walking in humility, understand that they have a fresh chance. They have another. Remember we said in the earlier points? that they look for fresh opportunities. 
It's a different day, a different time. Number 19 is not egotistical. Not egotistical. What is egotistical? That means that the person is full of self-obsession. Give oneself more importance than one needs to or deserves. Whereas if you're not, whereas if you are egotistical, you put all this focus on yourself because a humble person is fine with being the same way and being consistent because they like themselves. Like I'm, like I'm good with who I am. Like do you really look in the mirror and say you're good with who you are? I'm good. Praise the Lord. Last one, y'all, number 20. Person walking in humility is not defensive. Quick to jump to defenses. Person walking in humility, not defensive. If you, if you jump to defense quick, that means you're lacking humility. What is defensive? Not quickly offended. Person that jump to defense, that means they get offended real quick. A person that's not defensive, if they're not defensive and they're walking in humility, that means they know how to dust their shoulders off. They're not stuck on other people's opinions. I know what you feel about me, but it really don't matter. It really don't matter. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So is there anybody, praise the Lord, you have one that you feel like stuck out to you more? Yeah, I'm done, y'all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Elijah. Hold up. Uh, give him that mic. Hallelujah. Uh, the not the not rude and sarcastic one. Uh, not rude and sarcastic. Number six. Not rude and sarcastic. That stuck out to me because it's like I, I I can go back in my mind and see times where I've done that to people, you know, and you don't think about the magnitude of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, like when we talk about walking in humility, a lot of times. You know, you'll be, you can make yourself humble when you come to church and be a whole different person outside yes, of the world. And I think sometimes when I know something or it's like something that I feel like it's obvious and somebody, you know, they don't have it, you know, you can find yourself being sarcastic towards that person. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that one. And then there was another one. Uh, which one did I mark? Uh, 15, take it in stride. Um, and I think that's just because, like, when you think you're going through a lot of stuff and you start listing it, you know, it's like, God, why am I going through this, that, and the third? And it's like when you understand, like, everything that's happening to you is happening for a reason, you know, you take it as, you know, another another thing on the list. So it's just like, take it, take it in stride. Like, it happened? Okay, cool, let's move on. You know, yeah. So, so those are those are the couple. And then the last one, being defensive. That, the yeah. The last one was which one? Uh, not being defensive. Not not defensive. Oh, not defensive. That was a that was the last one for me because you can find yourself being defensive with everything that's going on in your life because it's like, well, that person not going through this, and I'm going through this, that, and the third. Why is it that I'm going through this? And you try to make excuses and reasoning for what you're going through. So yeah. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Hold on one second. Sister Lisa and Minister Jude, can y'all hear Terrence? You need it. Can y'all hear him pretty good? Not really turn. Speak up like you normally know speak up, man. Oh, yeah, um, me, uh, when you said not serve for themselves, when you said uh, they don't, not possessing for their own misery or not having self pity, but I actually have, like I've been, I've been, I've been dealing with like self misery. Yeah. Having pity on myself is like, 
because it's like just things that I do on a regular, sometimes I, I am almost almost like comparison, like dang, I I didn't got it all like that and and I'm like, man, I'm trying to do this too, but how they always accomplish but I don't know. Yeah. And one thing, one part, uh, one of the other thing is um knowing that everything has a reason and a purpose. Yeah. Because sometimes, not sometimes, no. Every time I uh, I feel like I mean I be I just be like thanks. And I guess this is how it is, I guess this is how it's gonna end, you know, like right. yeah, and, and, and not really seek it to change. Right, 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 right. Good, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, when you, uh, like you said, uh, the self-destruct. Self-destruction? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was thinking of when the Israelites were, were being led through the, de the desert, right? When they were in the desert? Yeah. And uh, they, were, they came to this tribe, I forget the name. Uh, they were supposed to fight them. But then they was like, we cannot fight the Israelites. They're too powerful. You know what we should do? We should bring women, and then when they see with their eyes, they will start falling away from the grace of God. Yeah. And then there's the, the book of, uh, of, of Job. He said that they were talking about the way they wanted to fight the Israelites is to bring women that they would be attracted to, yeah. to, to distract them. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And then in the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 20 to 21, even though you are righteous, our own mouth to condemn us. And then I'll start thinking how, like, sometimes. When like I make a mistake, I start condemning myself from depriving myself from the presence of the Lord. I'm like, I'm not worthy. Like, I don't feel like I don't feel like it's right for me God to pray to God, even though I've been messing up, you know, type of stuff. Yeah. And we bring it to our own self by by not confessing to God as you as you say, you know, by not running to God. Like, God, I've just messed up. Like, like heal me, you know. Yeah. But then we'll be like, no, I know I've been kind. I know like this arm is already, you know, it's already rotten. But I'm like, nah, I cannot, I cannot show him, you know. You know, you just wait until like, like that's the movie, like how people turn to zombies, you know. You don't have confess like I have this this thing that you need to be, you know, to be healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah uh, one I just want to be transparent.